We're asked to use the graph to determine a possible equation of the function as f of x. Analyzing the graph, we should be able to recognize the equation is going to be in terms of secant or cosecant. To begin, let's determine the midline. Notice how the low points here have a y value of two, and these high points have a y value of negative four. And since two plus negative four is negative two, and negative two divided by two is negative one, the midline is y equals negative one, which is here. Notice how to find this line. We averaged the y values of the low points and high points. And now for the next step, let's sketch in the vertical asymptotes. And then to help us determine the equation of the given graph, we're actually going to sketch a related sinusoidal function, determine that equation, and then use that equation to determine the equation of the given graph in terms of secant or cosecant. Before we do this, let's review the relationships between cosecant and sine, as well as secant and cosine. Notice how I've already sketched the vertical asymptotes. Notice where cosecant has a vertical asymptote, the related sine function value is zero or at the midline. Similarly, wherever secant has a vertical asymptote, the related cosine function value is zero or at the midline. And now let's focus on the points of intersection. Notice the points of intersection of cosecant and sine occur where cosecant has a low point and sine has a high point, or when cosecant has a high point and sine has a low point. Similarly, the points of intersection of secant and cosine occur where secant has a low point and cosine has a high point, or when secant has a high point and cosine has a low point. So going back to our graph, we now know where we have a vertical asymptote, the related sinusoidal function value will be at the midline, which would be here, 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 and so on. Similarly, the points of intersection occur at the low points and high points of the given graph in terms of secant or cosecant, which are here, 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 and so on. And now let's go ahead and sketch the related sinusoidal function. So now we'll actually find a possible equation for the sinusoidal function graphed in blue. Once we do that, we can simply change the cosine to secant or sine to cosecant. To do this, we now need to highlight one period of the sinusoidal function, then determine whether we want to use sine or cosine. So notice how if we focus on the y-axis and move to the right, there is one period of the sinusoidal function starting at x equals zero and going out to x equals four, this piece here. Notice how the pattern of this sinusoidal function is maximum, midline, minimum, midline, maximum, which should remind us of the cosine function. So we'll find the equation of the sinusoidal function in terms of cosine, and then use that to find the equation of the given graph in terms of secant. So looking at the notes below, we'll be finding the equation in this form here, where C represents a vertical shift and because the midline is y equals negative one, we know c is equal to negative one. The absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, and if a is negative, we have a reflection across the midline. Well, because the pattern is max, midline, min, midline, max, we don't have a reflection across the midline, and the distance from the midline to the maximum, this distance here is three units, and therefore a is equal to positive three. Now let's determine the value of b, where two pi divided by b is equal to the period. Well, the period is four units, and therefore two pi divided by b is equal to four. To solve for b, we multiply both sides by b. Simplifying, we have two pi equals four b. Divide both sides by four. Simplifying, we have b is equal to two fourths pi or one half pi. The last step is to find the value of d, where d represents a horizontal shift, or phase shift. You'll notice how this piece of the cosine function is not shifted. The pattern starts right along the y-axis, and therefore we don't have a horizontal shift or phase shift, d equals zero. So a possible function for the sinusoidal graph is g of x equals a, which is three, times cosine of b times the quantity x minus d would be one-half pi 
And since d is zero, we just have times x, and then plus c, which gives us minus one. Which means one possible function for the original given graph in black, in terms of secant, is simply f of x equals three times secant of one half pi x minus one. But I do want to point out, this function is not unique. If we focus on a different piece of the sinusoidal function, we would have a different function for the original graph. So for example, let's say we wanted to focus on the sinusoidal function from x equals negative one to x equals three. This piece here, Notice now the pattern for the sinusoidal function is midline, max, midline, min, midline, and therefore we would write the equation in terms of sine. Let's go ahead and show that. The amplitude hasn't changed and therefore a is equal to three. The period hasn't changed and therefore b is equal to one half pi. C hasn't changed, the graph is still shifted down one unit where the midline is y equals negative one, but d has now changed because Notice how the pattern for the sine function is not starting at the origin, it's actually shifted left one unit, and therefore d is negative one. So g of x in terms of sine would be g of x equals three times sine of one half pi times the quantity x minus negative one, simplifies to x plus one, and then we have minus one. Which means for the original graph that was given in black, we could also find the function in terms of cosecant, since cosecant is equal to the reciprocal of sine, we could have also given f of x as f of x equals three times cosecant of one half pi times the quantity x plus one minus one. Before we go, let's go ahead and graph these two functions to verify it does give us the same graph. In red we have the graph of the function in terms of secant, and if I turn on the graph in terms of cosecant, notice how the graphs are identical. I hope you found this helpful.